with solemn dignity, both Houses of Parliament received the French President and Madame Moriol in the Royal Gallery of the House of Lords. Greetings by the Lord Chancellor, Lord Jowett, were followed by the Speaker's reference to the President's gallant activities during the occupation of France. What we admire most of all is the stand you took against signing the armistice with Germany. And with typical charm, the President began his reply with an apology. Je suis désolé de ne pouvoir m'expliquer en français, car malgré mes efforts, je ne peux pas me débarrasser de mon accent d'origine. <laughs> Later, at the President's own request, a visit was paid to some of London's most heavily bombed areas. From Bermondsey, one of the hardest hit of all, came a real people's welcome. And the tenants of one of Bermondsey's new prefabricated homes were visited and praised by the President and the First Lady of the French Republic. Nightfall brought the climax of a state visit, a gala ballet performance at the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. Thousands saw the arrival of Princess Elizabeth, radiant in ivory satin and wearing the sash of the Legion of Honor. Together came the Princess Royal and the Duchess of Kent, as the Lord Chamberlain, the Earl of Clarendon, and the Earl of Airlie, with their rods of office, waited to receive the King and Queen. Sir John Anderson was one of the first to greet their Majesties, who now in turn were waiting to receive their guests of honour. And with that smiling grace now so familiar to the capital, the President and Madame Oriol arrived at Covent Garden to be warmly welcomed by their majesties. to the royal box, magnificently decorated for the occasion, with hangings of pale blue silk and garlands of flowers, making a setting unsurpassed in London history. So they took their places, the President and Princess Elizabeth on the Queen's right, Madame Oriol on the King's left. performance was about to begin, but many distinguished members of the audience were not yet present. A late session in Parliament delayed the arrival of the Prime Minister for more than an hour. Sir Stafford Cripps was another latecomer, and amid much applause during the interval, Mr Winston Churchill made his appearance. Later, the brilliant scene in the foyer was to be repeated as France's guests of honour prepared to leave for a last triumphal drive back to the palace. The state visit had indeed been one of royal splendour, but to the peoples of Britain and of France, it was also something more. A warm and human expression of friendship and understanding that gives new and deeper meaning to the Entente Cordiale. 